I want to be a missionary to go out and give the life of Christ to the people in the missionary countries. 25 years ago, one of the spiritual giants of the last century passed away. She was no politician, no businesswoman, no artist, and no billionaire. Yet her life impacted the church and the world like few others. To her, it was an answer to the cry of Jesus on the cross, I thirst. Everything she did, taking care of the poorest of the poor, addressing presidents and diplomats, opening convents across the world, all that was an attempt to quench his thirst for love. I was very, very struck by that. In 1979, of course, one of the most famous events in her life, she wins the Nobel Peace Prize. And she goes to give a speech in Oslo to world leaders, to very much the elite of the world. And nobody was expecting for her to say what she said, um, but she very famously uh, condemned abortion. She called abortion the greatest destroyer of peace in the world. And, um, and that was a very bold thing. And those are the kind of statements that can get you canceled in today's world. Um, but she had that courage, and it wasn't just then. In, in all her interviews, she always challenged people with um, a very strong moral compass and a very strong sense of courage. David Naglieri is the director of a new movie about St. Teresa of Calcutta, produced by the Knights of Columbus. The Missionaries of Charity, the order Mother Teresa herself founded, gave unprecedented access to their archives and local projects. It was finished in time for the 25th anniversary of her passing. The world premiere took place in Rome at the Pontifical North American College. Pope Francis commended the Missionaries of Charity and the Knights for the production. There have been many uh, films, documentaries, um, productions been made about Mother Teresa. What would you say um, is maybe special or also unique about um, this new project? Uh, unprecedented is the Missionaries of Charity totally opened up all their apostolates to us. And uh, Mother Teresa very famously said, if there was a need on the moon, we would go there. And we wanted to show that that's real. So in this film, we go to Tijuana, Mexico, where there's a canal where, where pe the poor people live and where they go and minister to them. We went to the Amazon jungle in Brazil, and we had drones following the missionaries of charity on little boats as they go to help the indigenous tribes that have no connection to the outside world. We went to the slums of Manila. We went to the slums of Nairobi, Kenya. So we went all over the world and showed how her vision to see Christ and to love Christ in the poorest of the poor is being lived out in all these diverse locales um, that n nobody is prepared to step foot into. And um, I, I think those two elements uh, are what sets this film apart and hopefully can, um, can rekindle a new, uh, new devotion to Mother Teresa and the new generation. Born in 1910, she grew up in a town which is now called Skopje, the capital of North Macedonia. Mother Teresa was fascinated by missionary stories early on. When she turned 18, she left her home and went to Ireland to join the Sisters of Loreto. They sent her to India, where she took her solemn vows in 1937 and served as a teacher in a convent school until 1946. She then felt the calling to devote her life completely to the poor. In 1950, so more than 20 years after arriving in India, she founded the Missionaries of Charity. The order continues the work of Mother Teresa around the world, following her credo that the one who saves one person saves the world. What would you say um, is Mother Teresa teaching the church today um, as a fairly new saint? Um, she, she was canonized um, in, in, in this century. Uh, what, what is her message for our generation today? Mother Teresa um, obviously was a great saint of the 20th century, a great missionary. Um, but I think what she always taught people is that we're not, we're not social workers. What we're doing is we're serving Christ and the poor. And everything was rooted in a deep sense of prayer and very much in her own devotion to the Eucharist. And, uh, and it was encounter with Christ and the poor. And so I think it's very important as we, as we go out to build a civilization of love, as we bring forward the new evangelization, as we try to work to build better communities, uh, better 
and create the civilization of love, that we maintain that, that idea that it's all rooted in Christ and that it, ultimately it's all rooted in prayer. The official Mother Teresa movie was produced by the Knights of Columbus. Jonathan Reyes explains why this was an important project for the Knights. Now the simple answer to that is we love Mother Teresa. And so when the opportunity was presented to us to try to capture this extraordinary life in film, we jumped at it. And Patrick Kelly, who's the head of the Knights of Columbus, just said, we must do this. And why do we love her? We love her because of her love of the poor. Wonderful. Um, what are your hopes that, uh, which impact this movie will have? Mother Teresa, I would say, opened our eyes. She gave us a different way to see the world. That is with Christ's eyes. Uh, at a time when people are talking public policy, which they should be, I've been in that space, and worried about how do we deal with suffering, how do we deal with injustice, etc. What Mother Teresa presents us with is a completely different way of viewing the entire world. That at the heart of the world really is love. The movie Mother Teresa No Greater Love will be shown in theaters across the U.S. on October the 3rd and the 4th.